Hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Great to have you back around these parts. I missed you. Hopefully you've missed me as well. This week we'll be delving back into the land of React and hooks. I've had a few videos about React hooks in the past, and this video I'm trying to uh, fill a hole in some of my content. And this week I'm going to talk with you about testing React hooks. Never talked about it before. I just assumed that your code was perfect and in need of no help from tests. But alas, some people have reached out to me and said, hey, uh, I need some help writing some tests with hooks. So this is what this video is hopefully going to show you. The short version of how to test with hooks, React hooks, is that you just test your React components as you normally would. That's kind of the short version of this video, but I'll delve into a little bit more detail to actually give you a little walkthrough about what it looks like to actually test a component that is using React hooks. Right now, let's start. Okay, so let me give you a little tour of what I've already written, just to kind of accelerate these videos. I made here a very basic component called my component, because it's my component, not your component. If it was your component, I guess it would be called your component. And it's using two of the most fundamental hooks, use state and use effect. So I'm using use state to track the count, a very unoriginal example, sadly. And here is the content of the component itself where I'm rendering the content. And then if you click on the button to increment the count, and if you're a Sesame Street fan, that's the, the count that will be incrementing the count. Uh, you're clicking here to increase the count here. And what I'm doing on here is I'm having a use effect such that when uh, ever this component re-renders, I want to give the call back a call to let any parent component know that something changed inside. Very simple, straightforward component just to have you there for example purposes. I have a basic uh, outline of a test component. I'm going to be using Jest as my test runner and assertion library and Enzyme as my React utility for rendering the React components. So if I start up Jest here, start running it, runs my tests and thankfully it works. Yes, addition in JavaScript is thankfully correct. But no, that's not what I want to do now. The first thing I want to do here is uh, I'm going to make a little uh, before each block. Uh, that's kind of how I like to structure my tests, having the same thing run before each assertion. Now I'm going to have a wrapper, which is going to be my, uh, let's move this up a little bit, wrapper equals uh, mount my corona. And then also what I need here is a mock function for my on count change callback. So on count change, I'm going to call just function to help make a mock function. And then I'm going to grab this, rename this to const, and put this in as a prop. And then we're going to say is that it renders. So we're going to say expect wrapper not to be null. Let's call that. Run the tests, and things are passing. So if I were to actually log this using uh, wrapper.debug, enzymes utility method for kind of seeing what's actually being rendered, you should see here in my nice little tree, and here I have it. So things are working, we're on the right path. Let's keep going. The first thing I wanna do is, uh, and again, this is me just rendering a regular React component, but I wanna actually start seeing uh, that when I call the button, my use state hook is correctly updating. So first thing I want to do is say that by default um, shows my default text. So if I say wrapper dot, uh, what is this going to be a P tag? So I'm going to say find P, uh, get the text. I'm going to say to equal, and this is going to be count zero. Save that. Cool. So that's working. And now uh, it shows it correctly increments the count by one. Again, 
the count from here. So I'm gonna get this button. So I'm gonna get the wrapper find uh, button. I'm going to uh, simulate a click event. And this should then change to one. Because if I click this, it should increase it by one, which should be now one. So if I save that, it works, sweet. I'm gonna do a little bit more. And again, the count is being reset to zero every time because I'm doing before each. So before each it statement, it's going to reset the count because it's reiterating the component from the beginning. Uh, by four, so if I do this one, two, three, four, this should now be four. Cool. Now, so, so just to catch you up to speed, uh, I have a React component that is using hooks that I'm testing just as I would any other component, which is lovely. Don't have to worry about any special considerations for it. Uh, let's actually test the uh, use effect hook. So if I grab this, I want to say, uh, I want to say that my on count change handler, uh, I want to say expect uh, this to be called so first, I want it to be called by default uh, once, because when it first renders, it should render that value there. Yes, it does. So now if I click it, then it should be called twice, because when you click it, you're incrementing the count, which then causes this use effect to be reran. Cool. Now what's interesting is that you can kind of play around with the functionality of use effect if you wanted to. Uh, the second argument of use effect lets you control when the effect is ran. So if you put in an empty array there, this effect will only run on the initial render of this component, uh, which means that when I do that, this second assertion should actually fail because it's not going to actually be re-rendering the, it will, the uh, use effect hook will not be we executed because it's only being done on mount. So if I save this, I should see that fail. Sweet, and it does because uh, it's to be called two times, but it was called one time. And if I want to actually just optimize very prematurely this component, I could say only rerun this effect when the count variable changes, which means that this should then work again because when I increment it, the value is changing, which means that the use effect hook will run. So cool, so that's me testing a component using hooks. Very cool. So let's take this up a notch. So let's imagine that you've written a custom hook. And a custom hook is essentially a function that is prefixed with use and uses other hooks or whatever you want it to do. So for our cases, I've made a very basic uh, use custom hook, which is use custom counter custom hook. And let's say we want to have one that's maybe more complex. I'm not gonna worry about that complexity right now, but let's say you wanted to test that hook in isolation. You might be wondering, how could you do that? And I'm glad that you're here because now I can show you how to test a custom hook. So the first thing to do is drag this over here just for cleanliness sake. And I'm going to import my custom, uh, sorry, use custom hook from use custom hook. And I'm gonna make a new describe block. Describe, I'm gonna say, uh, just only run this one, this is a just thing where I can just have just run these tests because I know the other one already passes. I don't really want to have that be confusing me. So let's start things simple. So I'm going to say it works in here. And again, I'm just going to say expect two plus two to equal four. Save that. And it's just going to run this one block of tests. Cool. So it works. Now let's say I want to. So when I, this custom hook is returning an object with count and increment. So let's say naively, I want to say results equals use custom hook. Do you have any idea what's going to happen? Any guesses before I show you the answer? Any guesses? Three, two, one, let's run the, run the code, see what happens. Fire and brimstone. Invariant violation, invalid hook call, hooks can only be called inside of the body of a function component. This is a rule of hooks in that hooks can only be called inside function components. Uh, do you see a function component here? Because I certainly don't. Uh, if I were to make a um, 
hook wrapper component here, and then have uh, let's say results. I'm going to say uh, results equals use custom hook inside of this function, and then we're going to use our good friend uh, enzyme to run this hook wrapper. So when I mount this hook wrapper, it's going to run my custom hook and assign the results to results and get that here. So if I say expect uh, results count to equal zero, is that going to work? Oh, it's not. Oh, because my component actually has to return a valid React element, so I'm just going to return null there. Save that. And cool, uh, it's working. If I were to change this to one, it should fail because by default the count is zero. Again, I expected one, but see it there. So cool. So uh, this is kind of gross to have to write a couple of times. So what you can actually do, and there's also libraries to do this as well, is to make your own little hook custom rendering hook wrapper. So what you can do here is you can say uh, render hook. And this takes in the uh, hook itself. And then what we can do is render this right here. And we can say hook is right like that. And we're going to say uh, mount hook wrapper. Because again, we have to render that inside of the component. And then we're going to say uh, let results. And then we're actually going to uh, return the results. So we have this little wrapper function. So uh, what I can now do instead is just do uh, render, so let's say const results equals render hook. And my hook is going to be use custom hook like that. If everything works out, it does. It works. Lovely. So let's actually use the other value, which is increment, to actually increment things here. So if I call results dot increment, then I would expect this to equal one. Oh, but uh, what is this? Results dot count equal one. Ooh, what's that done here? An update to hook wrapper inside a test was not wrapped in act. When testing code that causes React state to update, so you need to wrap it into act. Uh, so act is actually a little built-in test utility from React itself. So if I were to import act from here, React DOM test utils, and then I can wrap this function that's causing a state update, like so. Call that. And, oh, expected one to equal results increment. So this is failing, but that's all right. I think it's my little render hook requires a little bit of work right here. I think instead I might have to just uh, hoist this variable outside of it for references purposes. I have to delve a little bit more deep into why that is. But if I do that and then actually just reference that one result, up above, which is being saved on that initial render, then things work as expected. And you're testing your own custom hook. So that's how you test React hooks in your application. They're mostly like testing just regular React components. You can use whatever test framework, runner, assertion library that you want to use, enzyme, React testing library, just the plain React testing utilities, whatever you want, you can test it in the same exact way. Hopefully that clears up some confusion that you might have had about testing React components, and you're ready to actually start adding some tests to your application, because there ain't nothing quite like a passing test suite to let you sleep nice and calm late at night. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, please let me know down below. If you have any questions, please do add them into the comments as well. And I will be back again next week with a new video for your own entertainment. If you're not already a subscriber, do become a subscriber down below. I always love seeing that audience grow, more people I can talk to and enjoy working with. And uh, we'll see you again 
next week. Bye-bye.